the couple that robbed the mob. Before leaving their apartment at 83rd Street in Ozone Park, Queens, Rosemary spoke briefly on the telephone with her 61-year-old mother-in-law, Fanny Commando Yuva of the Bronx. Traffic was heavy, holiday motorists mixed with the usual Thursday morning rush hour congestion. The Yuvas, in a four-door maroon Mercury Topaz, were less than a mile from home at 9 o'clock when they stopped for a traffic light at 103rd Avenue's intersection with 91st Street. Bullets cracked in rapid succession through the Topaz's windshield. Three slugs struck 28-year-old Thomas in the head. Three others hit 31-year-old Rosemary. They died instantly. Their automobile, no longer restrained by the force of a living person's leg on its brake pedal, began to move through the intersection. Arya de Toma, 76, was at home in Ozone Park, cleaning fish for the family's Christmas Eve dinner, when her son, police officer Anthony de Toma, came in. They had been shot to death some hours earlier. Members of some New York crime families understood the reason, but they weren't yet talking about it. Fanny Yuva seemed to be the first to have an inkling. When she spoke with the local press, she remarked that the shooting sounded like something the Mafia would do. But she told reporters that her son Thomas had no connection to organized crime. Background Christmas 1992 became a period of mourning for the Uvan to Tom families. Funerals occurred immediately after the holiday. The couple, joined for a relatively short time in life, were separated in death. While Thomas Uva was buried in the Bronx, the de Toma family decided that Rosemary would be interred in St. John's Cemetery in Queens. Dot information about the two shooting victims gradually reached the authorities and the media. Rosemary de Toma was born in 1961 and grew up in Ozone Park. Her father died when she was young. After that, Rosemary became a wild child. Wild behavior became criminal behavior as she reached adulthood. In 1986, she was convicted of attempted robbery and served 15 months in state prison. When her mother Maria discussed this matter with the press, she mentioned, without providing details, that it involved her son placing her daughter under arrest. How Rosemary met Thomas Suva was uncertain, but it seems they were already involved as she went off to prison. They were married shortly after her release release in 1987. Thomas Uva was born May 17, 1964, to Anthony and Fanny Commando Uva of the Bronx. He was raised in that borough's southeastern Throgs Neck section. His father had a florist shop there on East Tremont Avenue. In the same year that Thomas and Rosemary married, Thomas's father accidentally shot himself and died of his wound. Anger was piled on to the shock of his father's death when Thomas learned that the family florist business would be given to his brother. Long fascinated with outlaws, Thomas began his criminal career at roughly the same time he began his marriage. He was convicted of attempted burglary and sent to prison in the summer of 1989. He was paroled in May of 1992. Rosemary, then an employee of a Manhattan collection agency, convinced her agency to give Thomas a job. He kept that position for about half a year. He was laid off in November, a month before he and his wife were killed. We hope you're enjoying the video. Now's the perfect time to hit like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great stories coming up and we'll be posting at least twice a week. So to stay updated please hit that notification bell. Now back to the story, the investigation. Early in the investigation, police struggled to find clues. Though the murders occurred in daylight at a busy intersection, no witnesses could be found. Two weeks after the killings, law enforcement learned from underworld informants that the Uvas had been deliberately targeted by New York Mafia crime families. The couple had reportedly earned the wrath of Mafia chieftains by spending the summer and fall of 1992 conducting brazen stick-ups at Mafia social clubs in Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens. In reporting this information, the New York Daily News noted, it is not clear how many social clubs have been robbed because the crimes are rarely reported to police. 
The story of mafia social club robberies made the proximity of one particular social club to the murder site seem much more than a coincidence. The Café Liberty, run as a neighborhood headquarters by Gambino crime family Capodessina Dominic Skinny Dom Pizzonia, sat just five short blocks, a quarter mile, from the corner of 103rd Avenue and 91st Street. Within days, statements from informants were sewn together into a more complete picture of the Uva's foolhardy criminal enterprise. It was said that the couple robbed at least four and as many as ten mob clubs. Carrying an Uzi submachine gun, Thomas entered the clubs, demanded that everyone inside turn over cash and jewelry and then insisted that they all drop their pants. Club members, prohibited by underworld rules from bringing any weapons into the establishments, were forced to comply. Thomas then ran outside and climbed into a getaway car expertly driven by Rosemary, because it would be both profoundly humiliating and a violation of the gangland code. The victims never reported these robberies. They also never forgot them. Informants indicated that a new Val robbery occurred at the Gambino family's Manhattan headquarters, Hawaiian Moonlighters Club, on Mulberry Street. Hawaiian Moonlighters was reportedly opened by Joseph Joe Butchkarau after the Ravenite Social Club, a few blocks north of 247 Mulberry, was seized by federal officials following the conviction of Gambino boss John J. Gotti. Another Gambino club robbed by Uva was the Veterans and Friends Club, 1468 86th Street in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, run by James Jimmy Brown Thaler. You've also targeted two unnamed clubs on Bath Avenue in Bath Beach, Brooklyn. One was run by George DeSico, brother of recently murdered Gambino underboss Frank DeSico, at 1628 Bath Avenue near Bay 13th Street. The other was a Bonanno crime family club run by Anthony Spero at Bath Avenue and Bay 16th Street. It was said that he robbed Skinny Dom Pizzonia's club in Ozone Park twice. On one of those occasions, Club members attempted to pursue the Uvas after the robbery. Rosemary managed to escape the mobsters, but not before they jotted down the license number of her car. Informants reported that Thomas Uva went out of his way to antagonize club members. During one robbery, he made a show of missing the carefully styled hair of an older mafioso. Uva even seemed to welcome underworld retribution. When a club member assured him that he would be killed for his offenses, Thomas replied, everybody dies. As the Daily News learned these details, it referred to the murdered outlaw couple as Bonnie and Claude, Justice. Though law enforcement was well convinced of New York Mafia involvement in the killings of Thomas and Rosemary Uva, it took almost 13 years for anyone to be charged. By that time, investigators understood through informants that the Gambino, Bonanno and Colombo crime families all had passed death sentences against the couple. There also was some evidence beyond the statements of informants. Federal authorities were in possession of an recorded conversation from Raybrook Federal Prison, located near Lake Placid in New York State. It captured visitor John A. Jr. Gotti telling an inmate about the killings of the Uvas and mentioning an earlier Uva-centered discussion he had in Manhattan with his imprisoned father, Gambino boss John J. Gotti. Investigators suspected that Dominic Pizzonia, Ronald Ronnie Juan Armtruccio and an unnamed driver were involved in the Christmas Eve 1992 shootings. Pizzonia and Truccio both were leaders of the Gambino organization in Ozone Park. Truccio, who since 1992 had pleaded guilty to New York State racketeering offenses and had been convicted of additional federal offenses, was already serving a lengthy prison sentence. Later convictions extended his sentence to life in prison. In December 2018, the 67-year-old Truccio was an inmate of the Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, federal prison. On the morning of September 22, 2005, Pete Sonia, 63, was arrested for the killings. He was arraigned at Brooklyn Federal Court that afternoon. Truccio was named as an unindicted co-conspirator. Pete Sonia initially was held without bail to await trial. On December 27, 
with federal prosecutors indicating that there would be a delay before the case was brought into court, Pete Sonia was released on a $3 million bond and confined to his home. Pete Sonia went to trial in Brooklyn Federal Court in spring of 2007 for racketeering conspiracy, as well as extortion and murder. A number of Mafia informants appeared as witnesses for the prosecution. These included Michael Mikey Scars de Leonardo, formerly of the Gambino crime family, and Salvatore good-looking Salvitali, formerly of the Bonanno crime family. Testimony revealed that, not only had the Gambino and Bonanno clans competed to be the first to find and murder the Uvas, they had also disputed for some time the identity of the Uvas killers. One Bonanno associate boasted that he had fired the shots into Thomas and Rosemary. The matter became a serious enough dispute to warrant a sit-down between family leaders. According to De Leonardo, Gambino leader John A. Jr. Gotti, presumably with De Leonardo accompanying him, met with Bonanno boss Joseph Massino and underboss Vitali to settle the dispute. Official credit for the killings was given to Pete Sonia. Pete Sonia defense counsel Joseph Correst so argued that the jury should give little weight to ex-mafia witnesses providing information against former friends and associates in exchange for prosecutor favors. Pete Sonia offered an unusual alibi for December 24, 1992. Annabelle Ello, the 78-year-old mother of his longtime mistress, testified that Pete Sonia was at her home all that day. Every Christmas Eve he's doing my fish, she said. He's a very good cook. Pete Sonia's prowess in the kitchen is supported by stories of fine meals made by Skinny Dom for guests at his Cafe Liberty Club. The five-week trial concluded on May 11th. The jury convicted Pete Sonia only on one count of racketeering conspiracy relating to participating in the planning of the Uva killings. The jury cleared him of charges relating to performing the actual murder and engaging in extortion. Federal District Judge Jack B. Weinstein sent sentenced Pete Sonia on September 5, 2007, to serve 15 years in prison. Pete Sonia's legal appeal, based upon the statute of limitations, was defeated at the U.S. Second Circuit in August of 2009. In December 2018, Pete Sonia, 77, was an inmate at the Butner Federal Medical Center in North Carolina. Pete Sonia was 78 years old when he was released on the 15th of November 2019. His scheduled release date had been the 28th of February 2020. And that ends of this story. Thanks for watching the best stories ever told. We appreciate that. If you enjoyed this video please smash the like button that helps with the algorithm and helps our videos get seen. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. We have a lot more great stories coming for you. Enjoy your day.